Hey, hey, hey! We've made it to just about the end of Recurrence Relations. This is just a review lesson. It's the key points from the first four lessons we have been over. I'm not going to explain anything in great detail. If you are wanting that, please look back at these individual lessons. This is just really the key points. We started looking at really a formula for the nth term and we found that you can define a sequence according to the terms u1, then u2, u3, working all the way up to some unknown value, say un. The term after that would be un plus 1. The term before that would be un minus 1. We saw that you can define a sequence two ways. You can either define it as a formula uh, for un in terms of n or because you've often got uh, one term relating to the previous term, you can define it as a recurrence relation. And for that, you need to know the first term, which is given by either u1 or u0. For example, with this sequence here, every single term you're adding on 4, so it's going to be the previous term add 4. Uh, recurrence relation is going to be of the form un plus 1 equals aun plus b, and that is your linear recurrence relation. We did a few examples with just working out various terms, so if you're given u0 to be 1, you could then work out u1, then u2, then u3, if you're given your recurrence relation. There were a couple of examples doing that. This first one was just straightforward, you have to work out u3. This one here, you have to work out the smallest value of n, such that uh, un would be less than 10. And we went through that. We then saw that you can apply that to worded recurrence relations, so this is where it would fit in in a real life. Uh, you are kind of using multipliers for this because a lot of the time something will be increasing or decreasing by a percentage, but you can't use your multipliers the same way as National 5 because you will be adding or subtracting something a lot of the time in higher. For example, with this question here, you can pause it, you can read it, you can look at the answer, but your recurrence relation, it's going up by 15%, so you have 1.15 UN, and then minus 100, because you've got the 100 millilitres of air escaping. So that is how you could use your recurrence relations. A lot of the time in uh, higher, the questions will relate to either pollution or possibly drugs um, in a patient's system. So this example here is very very common um, in the exams. This is something that you would have to be able to do. After that we then looked at convergence and divergence and we saw that if you have a recurrence relation un plus 1 equals 2 un plus 10 or 0 0.5 un plus 10, this number in front of un is going to mean that your recurrence relation will either converge or diverge. If you find that the values keep on going and going and going, they're going to uh, increase and they're going to tend towards infinity, you would say the sequence diverges. And it does that if this value is not between 1 and negative 1. If this value is between 1 and negative 1, then your sequence will tend towards a limit and it will converge. Working out limits, we did that. I know you loved it. UN plus 1 equals AUN plus B. As I just said, if this value in front of UN, if A is between negative 1 and 1, then your sequence will tend towards a limit. We did this just as a class going around. Everybody was answering, and you did have the correct answers here as well, and the reasons whether it would tend towards a limit or not. We saw that if it does tend towards a limit, eventually it's the limit you'll be putting back in in terms of un, and you'll still get this limit out. If you rearrange this formula, what you'll get is a formula for the limit. So the limit would end up being b over 1 minus a. With that in mind, we worked out some of the limits for recurrence relations. These ones here, a limit does exist because the value of a is between 1 and negative 1. The same with this one, the value of a is between 1 and negative 1. Limits do exist, and you can go on and you can work the limits out using b over 1 minus a. Again, as I said, a lot of the time it will relate to pollution. The SQA are very big with that. And you will get worded questions like this. Um, you'll often get a part B as well, which you'll have to answer just checking your understanding of it. But this one here is talking about the long-term effects on the amount of waste. So long-term effects, talking about limits. You've got to re create your recurrence relation and then try and answer it as best you can using everything that you know. Uh, about recurrence relations. The final thing that we did was working out the values of A and B, as I was saying in this lesson. 
a lot of the time you will be able to work out U1, U2, U3 and from that you have to form your own recurrence relation and you do that using Ava's favourite simultaneous equations. So we had an example here which was just straightforward, it was using the numbers, using simultaneous equations to work out A and B, you can then put it into a recurrence relation, and we had one again which was talking about drugs in a patient's system, a real life example there. Again there was a part B which you had to answer, again it's checking your understanding of the question. That was really everything in the Recurrence Relations chapter, so give these questions a shot just in the review. This is everything that you need to be able to answer. Any problems, let me know, but it's on page 93 in the Maths in Action book. Check the workbook, but that is all.